Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. Today I will be your guide through history as we take a look at Zenobia, the queen who dared to defy Rome. Before we begin, just a quick reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. Moving right along, mythology tells us one thing while archaeology tells us another. Who was Zenobia and why did she dare to defy Rome? Septimia Zenobia was a 3rd century queen of the Palmyrene Empire in Syria. By all accounts, she was a cultured monarch who fostered an intellectual environment in her court. She was tolerant to her subjects and protected religious minorities. The queen maintained a stable administration which governed a multicultural, multi-ethnic empire. Do we know when and where Zenobia was born? She was most definitely a native Palmyrene from the family of Septimia. Though many legends surround her ancestry, she was probably not a commoner who married the ruler of the city who later became king. Noble families in Palmyra often intermarried and it is probable that Zenobia and her husband shared some ancestors. What we do know is that she was the second wife of King Odonathus. No contemporary statues of Zenobia have been found in Palmyra or elsewhere. However, archaeological evidence has produced inscriptions on statue bases bearing the queen's name. Sculptures of Palmyrene style were normally impersonal unlike those of the Greeks and the Romans. A statue of Zenobia would have given only an idea of her general style in dress and jewelry, but would not have revealed her true appearance. Most known representations of her are found in idealized portraits on coins. In addition to the archaeological evidence, Zenobia's life was recorded in many different ancient sources. Unfortunately, they are flawed and even fabricated, especially an account of her in the unreliable Roman source, the Augustane History. The most reliable source of Queen Zenobia's life comes from the Byzantine chronicler Johannes Zonaris. It is generally believed that Queen Zenobia was quite the linguist. She was said to have spoken her native Aramaic along with Greek, Latin, and Egyptian. Once her husband became king in 260 of the Common Era, elevating Palmyra to supreme power in the Near East by defeating the Sassanians and stabilizing the Roman East. After her husband was assassinated, Zenobia became regent for her son and held de facto power throughout his reign. In the year 270 of the Common Era, Zenobia launched an invasion that brought most of the Roman East under her sway and culminated with the annexation of Egypt. She continued to extend her realm from Ancyra, central Anatolia, to southern Egypt. Although she remained nominally subordinate to Rome, the Roman Emperor Aurelian saw the queen as a threat rather than a friend. This was because to the Romans, the Palmyrian leaders ruled at their behest, while Queen Zenobia and the Palmyrenes believed that the position of kings was hereditary. This conflict was the first step on the road to war between Rome and Palmyra. Immediately, the Roman Emperor dispatched the Praetorian Prefect Aurelius to assert imperial authority over the East. Aurelius and his forces were repelled by the Palmyrene army. Finally, Palmyra officially broke with Rome. The Palmyrenes then began preparing for the eventual war with Rome. Just north of Antioch, Rome defeated Queen Zenobia and her army. The Palmyrenes then made their way southward to Emesa with the Romans in pursuit. On the plain of Emesa, the Palmyrenes met full force with the legions of Aurelian. Though the Palmyrenes fought bravely, they were once again routed by the Roman legions. Queen Zenobia returned to the city of Palmyra and prepared for a siege by the Romans. As the situation worsened, Queen Zenobia fled the city. Once Aurelian learned of her flight from Palmyra, he sent out a contingent to capture her before she could cross the Euphrates River and into Persia. Once the Romans had taken the city of Palmyra, Aurelian spared the queen and her son to parade them in his planned triumph in Rome. After parading the defeated queen throughout several prominent cities of the east, he had her beheaded in Rome. This brings us to the end of Zenobia, the queen who dared to defy Rome. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Traveler's Tales. Just a reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. For your convenience, we have also posted our email address and Instagram information. 
We enjoy hearing from our subscribers and encourage you to contact us with any questions or comments you may have. If you haven't subscribed to Traveler's Tales, please do. This really is the best way to help our channel grow. Traveler's Tales will return with part two of Zenobia, the Queen Who Dared to Defy Rome. Until we meet again at the crossroads of folklore and fact, Cartistos. <laughs>